So let's go ahead. All right. So welcome again to another one of our uh, externships. We are so pleased to have all of you with us today. Um, just as a reminder, like we've done with the last few sessions, uh, we'd love for you to please keep your camera on the whole time during the uh, webinar and the presentation. We'd also like to ask you to mute your mic if you're not speaking. Uh, it helps to minimize any potential background noise that may be coming up uh, and showing with what's happening here. Um, now that we've got those housekeeping things out of the way, I would like to welcome our presenter, uh, Trey. Uh, Trey and his team at Pulte uh, are going to share a lot with us today that's really a mixture from the various divisions and sectors of the Pulte group and uh, the projects and the things that they're working on here to give a little bit of an idea of career opportunities, frankly, from the various uh, various sections that are there. We often think about the, the hands-on skilled craft, right? But we're not always thinking about the other parts, whether that's through the marketing and sales, whether that has to do with the the property and the acquiring of that, or even the, the back uh, work that has to do financially with things. So we're excited to, to see his presentation today. So with that, Trey, I will turn the time over to you and your team. Fantastic. Thanks, Paul, for the introduction. I like the, uh, I think you had a construction hat behind you. So I don't know if you did that, especially for us, but I'm liking it. Uh, I well, do well, have it behind me and I'm a big supporter. So thank you. Perfect. Well, welcome everybody. I like seeing everybody throughout the uh, the state. I appreciate your time, spending a little time with uh, myself and our team here. And as Paul mentioned, our goal is really to, to elaborate a little bit on um, the different departments. Home building is so vast. We have so many opportunities for employment. As you think about your students or that that uh, career path as, as one of the notes that we prepared for, we want to provide you some of those ideas uh, to, that you could pass on to your students, uh, you know, as you develop them and, and give them those career paths in the future. So, you know, both myself and our team members are going to share with you the next hour or probably 40 minutes is about the amount of information that we have because we do want to leave it open to some questions. But if you have any questions, I got the chat going on here. If you have them, go ahead and put them in there. We'll try to address them and um, hopefully you get something out of it. That's the goal. So without further ado, let's get after it. So we only have nine slides and uh, you know, the first one's the agenda. You'll, you'll see here is I wanna give you a quick overview of Pulte Group or a national home builder with the third largest in the country. So I'll, I'll give you a little more context about who we are. And really we'll look at this as a panel presentation. I have Todd Nape, who's our director in land development, um, Marin Brunker, who's our director of marketing, Lauren Marquez, who's the director of customer care. And each one of us are gonna spend a couple minutes to tell you a little bit about who we are, what our discipline is, and what makes uh, for a great candidate or employee within the organization. And I think between the balance of just us four on the call, I think we have about 50, 60 years worth of home building experience. So uh, you have some very experienced people on the call that, that can answer any questions you might have, and hopefully we'll prompt some. All right. Uh, everybody hear me okay? Thumbs up from Aaron or Paul, perfect. Okay, so who is Pulte Group? So we're a national builder that's at, that work and operate in the various states below. It's about half the states in the continental US. Uh, we don't have an inter international building presence. We focus just mainly on the United States and the east, eastern and western seaboards and along the south and up in the northeast. Uh, not a whole lot in the, in the, in the central Midwest yet, but we're always looking for expansion opportunities there. Um, so we are the third largest home builder by size and closings. And so when you think about how many homes we built in 2019, we are a publicly traded company. So I really can't give you any real time metrics on what we plan on closing in the year. So this is off of our website under the investor section. And I just wanna give you some context. We'll have about 23,000 closings last year. We will exceed that. And you can see the various markets that um, those closings were populated in with a majority coming out of both Florida, West and Texas. And so uh, I'll talk a little bit more about that on, uh, on the next segment where I talk about branding uh, on why that is. But then you think about just how big we are in terms of revenues. So close to $10 billion in revenue and home closings 
um, is, is really what we achieved last year. And the last section is called own lots. The reason that's important is, is if we're, we close 23,000 homes, we got to have that pipeline already purchased so that Todd can go develop it, bring it to market so I can sell it, and then our construction team can build it and we can close it. So we have to have a lot of home sites out there through our land acquisition team that are in the pipeline already purchased that we won't necessarily bring to market for another year or maybe even two years, depending on the community. So those are some quick metrics that give you a high level understanding of really just us as a home builder as it relates to where we operate and how and the size of our business. The next thing I want to talk touch on is really branding. And so our strategy is to sell a, a and provide a home to every single consumer and we call them target consumer groups from your first time home, you, you, you're moving out of your, your rental from college, you get your career going, you're ready to buy your first house, but you may not need 5,000 square feet on a big, big home site. You just can't afford it yet, typically. Our Centex, working from left to right, really caters that. It, it's, it's, it's simple. It's, uh, we put a lot of uh, uh, features in the home and don't overcomplicate it and really try to design those communities at a very, very um, affordable price point for our consumers. And so we have a Centex community here in, in the Phoenix out in Buckeye. It's starting at about $215,000. And so very, very affordable in, in, in the Phoenix MSA or market. So that gives you some context and syntax. So then you start working to your right and we use this term move up. That's kind of your next home. Pulte is pretty much our, our, our flagship, flagship name from our founder, Bill Pulte. That's where it all started 50 plus years ago. But that encompasses both move up and luxury. John Whelan, we just acquired that company and it's more of a luxury home builder in, in Nevada and Las Vegas. The Vasta is more age targeted, more towards that active adult, um, but it's just targeted. So if you're less than 55 years of age, say you're 42 and you wanna be in a kind of an older lifestyle community, that's what this the Vasta would serve, primarily in the Southeast coast. And Del Webb, who, you, who hopefully everybody's familiar with, Sun City, it all started here. Um, we acquired that company in the early 2000s. Uh, Del Webb is our active adult, highly amenitized. As you live out your golden years in your golf cart, playing golf and having fun, that's what we're targeting there. So you get an idea of what we're looking for to serve our, our consumer group, really serve everybody from beginning to end. And we really look for that repeat buyer business. Here in Arizona, here's the, the three products that we, uh, that we serve. It's Centex, Pulte, and Del Webb. All right, and so you'll see that throughout the, uh, you know, both Phoenix and Tucson and the periphery thereof. Okay, the Pulte difference. So one of the things that we look at, these are the four pillars, if you, if you will. We wanna build great floor plans for our customers that they give us feedback on what we're doing, that we, what do we need to do differently? So with COVID hitting, uh, we're seeing a lot of people go out to the periphery because they can work remotely now. So they're looking for office spaces and technology and uh, those types of comforts now that their, their lives are changing. So we're quickly adapting and building our floor plans to meet the needs of, of, of what our customers are looking for. We offer the ability to personalize our floor plan so people can go select options. And that's the beauty of building your own new home is you get the granite that you want and you don't compromise on anything. You pick everything you want, including your home site. High standard of quality. We put a lot into our home uh, that's more expensive than a lot of our peers do based on building a quality product. And those, we call them Pulte construction standards. They go throughout every single one of our homes, whether it's Centex all the way to Dell Webb. We don't compromise on our construction standards and uh, we build a quality home no matter who you are and, 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 and what price point you're buying in. And then it's the ease, the building process and the buying process and working with us, we're always looking to be very easy for our customers to do business with because candidly, it's the biggest purchase you'll ever buy unless you got a you know a private jet that you're planning on buying. Your home's gonna be your biggest purchase. And when you think about it, it's the only thing that you get to see built in front of your eyes. 
So you don't see your car built in front of you. You don't see your phone built in front of you. Um, so we just want to make it a great experience so that you can live through that over the five to eight months that we build your home. Now, as I transition into the individual presentations here, what I wanted to share with you is all the different departments that are popping up that, that we have within home building that your students or future uh, candidates can apply for and, and people that we're looking to employ. And I think when, when we get to some of the other presentations of Lauren and Marin and Todd, and they share some of your experience, uh, on how they've transitioned from schooling to the company and making a career out of it. Hopefully that'll give you some insight into a little bit more of each department. So with that said, th these are the departments we're gonna focus on and each one of us will represent that going forward. Certainly we'd love to tell you about all of them, but uh, um, for the time's sake, we, we're just gonna focus on these four. Uh, but you can see there's all kinds of different departments you can work on in home building. All right, before I transition to the individual presentations, any questions so far? All right, I don't see anything coming through the, uh, the chat. All right, here we go. So now we'll get into the individual presentations. And really, my name's Trey Bittaker. I'm the Vice President of Sales for Pulte Group Arizona. I run the Phoenix and Tucson market, and that's our Arizona division. Been in home building for about 16 plus years. And I, I start off with home builder Sentex Homes, which you saw earlier, that uh, was acquired in 2010. And I was lucky enough to come over in the acquisition. And, uh, you know, the ultimate, you know, the Pulte Group is a fantastic company with great people. I wouldn't work anywhere else. So I'm hoping to finish off my career here. Various positions and career path. What's really interesting is over that 16 years, I started off as a sales consultant, but I've done five different jobs at Pulte. I've been a project manager, uh, a little bit time in construction. We had a company called Pulte Building Systems, what, which was our self-performed trades that, that were framers and plumbers and electricians. I worked over there for a little bit. Um, I worked in procurement to buy the materials to build our home. So uh, I was afforded that opportunity because when the downturn had the Great Recession that was pretty much sparked by home building or, or you know, the uh, home building kind of bubble bursting back in 2006-7, we shrank along with other companies. And so I, I just had to go where the work was. And the company came to me and said, hey, are, you know, would you be willing to do this? And my position was always, just put me in coach. I'll, I'll play anywhere you want me to play. And I'm just grateful to get a paycheck because during those times, there was a lot of my peers that were, that were unfortunately being laid off. And so it afforded me the opportunity to really see a diverse career path. And so one of the things I would bestow upon, you know, young students and people that are coming up is be flexible and be open. Um, because now that I reflect back, it's allowed me the opportunity to really gain a better understanding of the business versus just being in one lane and only knowing sales. So, you know, that's kind of the first aha that I would bestow upon, uh, you know, new students is have that flexibility, be open to change, get outside of your comfort zone. And if it feels like it's gonna be different or difficult, that's an opportunity for you to learn. So that's who I am. Um, so let's talk about sales consultant and how do you become a sales consultant and, and, and uh, join a career in, in selling homes? So what do we look for? So for those of you that have the students in the class, we're looking for that extroverted person. They're the life of the party. They may be your class clown. Uh, they may be the person that you're constantly having to say, hey, look, Johnny, get back there and do your work. Uh, quit talking to that person or quit talking to that person. Uh, they're the person that's bouncing around, just talking, 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 um, because they, they just stimulated by that. They're stimulated by the interaction with other people and, you know, either making them happy or trying to figure out more about them and learning more about them. So, you know, if you have that student that you can all probably think of, they're probably a good salesperson in the future. Uh, the other thing that makes a good sales consultant is really being competitive, is having that competitive drive. Because in sales, there is a scoreboard. 
these are commissioned sales consultants. So you don't make anything unless you sell something. And so we give goals and let's say you got to sell four homes a month. Well, if you're halfway through the month and you haven't sold anything, they're not back on their heels just waiting for that next buyer. They're on the phone. They're calling people. They're competitive. They're behind and they, they will step up their games, you know, to, to, to make that goal. They're goal driven and that's why we give it to them. So they, they want to be competitive and that's what we look for in some of the sales team in a good way. I think it's self-competition, not stepping over people to get to your end, end result. We don't, we don't look for that. It's having that drive that I want to get up, self-starter, and make make phone calls to people that may not want to talk to me, and that's okay. They they get through that. Um, they also need to be a good listener, and and I put with common sense because you do have to have a little bit of street smarts to understand people. You got to be able to read expressions and nonverbal behavior is what we call it because if I'm talking about something that you're not interested in, which I hope I'm not you'll tend to look at your phone or look at the TV or kind of just check out. So the goal is to keep people engaged and, uh, and be a listener is how we do that, is ask good questions so we can narrow down their focus. Because when people come in and they look at four homes, five homes, and they look at builder after builder after builder, what we're trying to do is just ask really good questions of people so that we can make their time efficient and show them what'll best meet their needs in terms of a home. So we try to, as a professional, take that information and then recommend, hey, based on what you told me, let me show you this home because I think it's really gonna hit a lot of the marks that you're looking for. Um, so having the common sense to know when to transition and how to read folks, that's what we look for. The last thing is being, and certainly not least, is being really, is being ethical. Leading with a good heart, knowing that you're not gonna be um, you know, known as that used car salesperson that's just out to make a dollar, um, you know, sales, because everybody buys a car and everybody can, uh, you know, relate to that. And, um, you know, some people like it, some people don't. Salespeople, we like it. I'll go there, I'll negotiate all day long because I want to see what practice is and what, what, what they will try to do to sell me. And I'll give them objections to see how they overcome it. And then I'll break them down at the end and tell them what they could have done better. So I'll, I'll thrive in that. Most people don't. They'd rather avoid the salesperson. Um, so being ethical to help people understand our really main motivation and drive is to help you. Once we can build some rapport with you and really break down your defenses and kind of open up that, that uh, onion, as we say, then we can really start to help you. So I think going with a lens and being ethical and putting the customer's interest and in that of the business before your own pocket, super important. The other thing is we're licensed uh, with the Department of Real Estate. So Aaron, you're talking about you know continuing education classes. So that resonates with us because we have to do continuing educa education classes uh, as well. Every two years, we've got to finish up 24 hours of continuing ed. So we're licensed by the Department of Real Estate and we're held to a higher standard. We're fingerprinted from the FBI and, um, you know, we're held to a higher standard. So, you know, uh, we need good ethical people to maintain that standard and really work with the consumer base and our, and our customers in a fair and honest way. So super important there. Last but not least is, you know, why do we do it? So we have a comprehensive training program as people come to us we can train them from beginning to end on our sales process. And those skills are applicable to all industries. So once you know sales, you can adjust it and go sell cars or sell, go, go sell tile or whatever the case may be, because your sale fundamental skills can transition to all industries. Uh, but we can train people on that, and specifically to home building. Uh, they got to enjoy helping people. You have to enjoy that. You don't want to go ahead uh, at the end of the day and say, oh my gosh, I just hate talking to people. That's not what it's about. You have to have that drive and that enjoyment about, you know, making people's dreams come true. Uh, I know it's somewhat of a cliche, but that's what we really believe in is, is we really enjoy that. And the last but not least is we make a good living being in sales and in new home sales. Uh, we try to sort through that with candidates because they hear about what we can. Uh, make in terms of commission sales, 
you sell more, you make more, you don't sell as much, you don't make as much. And so, and you suffer weekends and, and sometimes nights, you're working on weekends and nights. So it's not for everybody, but there is pros and cons. So you make a great earn, you know, great living, enjoy working with people and uh, have a lot of fun doing it. And you don't necessarily have to be an engineer or an architect or, you know, or a doctor. You don't need all the um, schooling uh, to be one. You just need to go to the Department of Real Estate and get your licensing, and then you can go sell residential resale on uh, right afterwards. So you don't need that uh, you know, extensive education, although many of us do. So with that being said, I'm going to transition on to our next presenter, and that's Marin Brunker. He's our Director of Marketing. Marin. Good afternoon. Can you guys hear me? We okay. can. Okay. I am Maren Brugger. I am the Director of Marketing here at Pulte. Um, I've been with the company for 15 years. Um, I started right out of college as a college recruit, and I've primarily been in the marketing role throughout my entire career with the company. Um, I am responsible for developing and delivering a, an integrated strategic marketing plan that drives leads and traffic to our community based on the company's goals. So basically, in other words, I'm responsible for anything that is consumer facing. So anything that you would see out um, as a shopper, the website signage, when you get on site, you know, how the, the office looks and feels, the different collateral pieces and flyers that you're going to get um, sales consultant and really just building awareness for the brands that we have in and that we serve in the Arizona market. And so um, what I would say, uh, what I look for from a, for a marketing candidate, um, first and foremost, I would be the willingness to learn and the desire to continually learn. Um, this is a trait that I look for and I think can apply to any career path that you choose really. Um, what I found over the years is you don't need to know everything about marketing or building, you know, that can be taught first. Somebody needs to be, um, have the willingness to learn and the desire to learn. So I really look for somebody that's not afraid to ask questions um, and is really humble and to learn from their mistakes. So, um, and with that, marketing is continually changing, it's evolving, the shopper behavior changed. So there's always something to learn in marketing. So I think um, that's a great skill set to have. Um, kind of ties in also to being adaptable. Uh, we all know how important that is these days. So um, over the years, really technology has changed and the consumer behavior has changed with it. And marketing has had to adapt. So um, I would in the last 10 years, we shifted really from a traditional media platforms like broadcast TV and radio and billboards and print ads to, to more of the digital platform, you know, online advertising ad search, um, digital video, stream music platforms, social media. So being able to adapt to all these new technologies over the years, I think is really important. Um, I probably should have put this on first being a creative and analytical thinker. So it's super important to be creative, you know, have an eye for design, have the ability to generate new creative campaigns, um, it, messaging that resonates with your audience. Um, but it's really critical to be an analytical thinker. Um, marketing strategies, and decisions in business are really driven by data and the appropriate metrics that are correlated to what campaign goals you have or key performance indicators that you use. So being able to look and analyze metrics to draw conclusions is super important. That kind of how what drives the business. Um, what do I got next on there? Communication. Uh, marketing really is a form of communication. So Marketers need to be able to provide clear messaging uh, that resonates with the target audience, whether that's internal or your external customers using the appropriate tone, because not it's not appropriate to speak to um, an audience of a first home buyer the same way you would maybe an act adult. Um, 
the terminology is different. They have different needs and desires. So being able to communicate early, both written and verbal um, are important. Experience with some contemporary digital tools. So like I said before, we live in a digital age now. So marketers need to understand and how to use and leverage different tools like blogs and meet digital media, um, new apps that come up. Uh, new tools and technology like QR codes. Our shoppers expect us to be on those platforms. So being able to, to know what they are and understand these different platforms um, is super important. So if you're like my husband who wants to go back to a flip phone, maybe marketing is not for you. <laughs> uh, being organized and accountable, this same thing goes really can apply to any career. Um, but specifically from my perspective, marketing is fast paced with a lot of projects going on at any given time. No two communities are the same. They're all at different stages. They all have different needs. So being organized really helps you more productive. It saves time, you know, and ultimately you're able to accomplish more, hopefully less stress. Um, and being accountable really just shows somebody responsible and you can be trusted to do what's asked of you. Um, and the self, self starter, uh, in general, marketing in the home building industry is smaller than most other departments. So being able to seek out solutions to problems, being forward thinking about next steps before you're asked, it's really critical in a fast paced environment when you have, um, you know, maybe limited resource for me, it's me and my manager. So we manage everything in Arizona. And so being able to just go out and get it is, um, and get things done is super important. And then plus, I think when someone sees those opportunities to be a self-starter, it helps build their own confidence in the workplace. So um, it's a plus all around. And then I didn't put this on here, but an overall fit, I think um, generally is what I look for. Someone that's gonna enhance the company culture, um, say it around here a lot, one team, one dream. So, um, if they're a good fit, you know, we can train them, we can help them with the tools that they need. Um, so super important. And then why marketing? I love my job. So I, um, I am creative, but I'm also analytical. So um, I, I, it fits for me, but it allows you to be innovative and analytical and you contribute to business at every touch point in the shopper's journey. So it's nice to um, know that you're really making a difference and you played a part in helping someone find the home of their dreams, which is pretty cool. So with that, that's marketing in a nutshell. If anybody has any questions, let me know. Otherwise, I will turn it over to Lauren, I believe. Lauren next. Hey guys, can you hear me? Okay. Hopefully I'm not too loud. Um, I'm Lauren Marquez. I've been with Pulte for 16 years. I actually was a um, college recruit and I've been in customer care the entire time. So a little different than you, Trey. Um, started out in the field, which means um, you're meeting with customers in their home and building relationships after they've closed on it and um, have, have worked um, the entire 16 years through it. So, um, my responsibility is for the operations and, and results of the post-closed customer experience, which includes, you know, all of encompassing teleacquisition, performance management, risk escalated issues, management, managing trade partnership, and warranty spend. Um, it's kind of all encompassing, but the gist of it is this. Um, customers close on their home and they have a product that Trey said you watched be built and now they're living in it. And our team gets to be their first guests in the house, basically. Go in the house, um, meet the customers, really get a chance to understand what they're using their home for and who's living there and what's important to them and really um, reselling the company back to them. And um, jokingly say a lot though that our team is employed because human hands build homes and things and mistakes can happen. And the reason that we're assigned to these homes is to manage their warranty ultimately, right? So we're there to make them feel good about it, but also understand that 
um, there are issues that will and may arise with their home and we're the ones that we're going to be well versed in um, keeping them at, at ease, working with our trade partners and helping them um, get whatever issue um, taken care of for them. I mean, it could be something from they just really don't like the way the paint looks on their wall. Um, they thought they liked it and talking through that with them to a leak in their home and what do we do and how do we alleviate it? Um, the, the other aspect of, of it is working with our trade partners. Our trade partners are there to come out and make those repairs. So they're basically in customer care with the liaison between the customer and their home and the trade partner who built their home and keeping everyone accountable to make the appropriate repairs and have the customer back into you know happy shape and how their home is. We're really working to, um, again, resell the brand and the business and making them feel comfortable when they may have had a situation that left them not at ease. Um, essential skills for the role. Um, the biggest thing for me when I'm looking for someone to fill this role is someone that you can foresee in the home with a customer. You're gonna trust this person to be by themselves with the customers we sold this house to. That's very important, right? You all have probably had someone in your home at some point do service. Um, and that person that's in the house is really a reflection of our company. So important that they are excellent communicator, communicators and have listening skills. Um, a problem solver. Uh, sometimes folks just think we're in there to, to have um, conversations and, and build relationships, but a very large part and probably the most challenging portion of the role is being a problem solver because you have to be resourceful. There are many parts and pieces in a home and there are many different things that can happen to a house. This isn't like buying, you know, your iPhone breaks down and you, it's a couple of like a button's not working and that's it. This is an entire home. Um, we have tons of different bells and whistles in there and really having to deduce down to what the, um, the actual issue is to determine who needs to go out to the home or just the best resolution for the issue. Um, conflict resolution. Um, we love building relationships with our buyers, but sometimes they're upset and we're, we really do have to have folks that are um, patient, which is the next one there, but very patient that can work with all walks of um, uh, personalities and being able to try their best to remain calm and work through an issue. And again, you're in their home. This is different. They're not coming to us in our office. We're standing in, in their environment and really being able to, um, to help them with any type of conflict or frustration they may have with their home. Um, time management is key. As I mentioned, they are liaisons. We're liaisons between the customer and trades. Um, we have, you know, um, Customers don't want to wait for a very long time. If you're not organized and on top of things and you're not managing your time effectively, there's constantly, a, you know, you're either in a home meeting with a customer or you're getting phone calls from a customer in which they um, have an issue. And so you're constantly kind of back and forth and changing that. So time management is important. Ability to adapt and respond to different personalities. I know I covered that, but adaptability really is key in this role. Um, um, Marion and Trey mentioned just, um, adapting to, you know, COVID, you know, we, our everyday day to day has always been going in customers' homes and meeting with them. And then all of a sudden we couldn't. And then when we could, you have to wear a mask and shoe covers and gloves and things like that and really adapting to that. And um, we found new ways um, such as Zoom, like we're all doing today um, to meet with our customers and it feels and still make it feel personable to them and that we're here to take care of them. Um, being organized and accountable, that's good for any job, but certainly this one. Uh, Self-driven and high quality of service and follow-up. Um, I'm touching on the biggest part of things, whereas um, customers in the home, but we also have a whole other um, department or extension to our department, which they have it with a call center. Um, and the neat part to throw that out is um, when we're looking for folks and may not have like a construction background, um, but they have very heavy customer service skills. Um, this is where we really start folks as like an entry level position. And they answer all calls coming from our division of any issue and determine the life and the path for that customer. Is it something we can just schedule or do we need to have folks out to the home to look at it? And they learn along the way. So it's a great jumping off point. Um, we typically have folks in that row 
role for about um, two years and then their kind of advancement is to the next steps typically is a customer care role in the field where they're meeting, like I said, with in person. However, I've had so many folks come into the to the call center, learn the Pulte culture and everything and decide to branch off into other departments too, which is really um, a neat part about Pulte. Um, and why do this role? Um, building quality relationships. Folks love this job because no day is the same. You're meeting different people all day. You'll, it's almost every day I'll hear from an employee of a, oh, my customer that it's almost like they become a friend or they'll give them a gift. Like, oh, I made this for you. And you just really become an extension to their family sometimes. Um, have to enjoy helping others because that's literally what we're here to do is help them with whatever um, they have and, and, and be an ad, a company advocate to, um, to them to show them that, hey, I might not know the answers or may not even be able to fix this for you, but I'm um, able to find out what we can do to get you to where you need to be and educate the customer on their home. So you're really a resource, a walking resource to these home buyers. Um, satisfied customers and then just the pride that comes with it that maybe you started with a pretty ugly problem and ended with a really awesome solution and a really happy buyer that, you know, writes a letter or just gives you a hug, it happens, so. And with that, if you have any questions or we'll turn it over. All right, now. very good, Lauren. Uh, I don't see any questions coming through, so we'll finish up with Todd and then we'll open up for some questions. Take it away, Todd. All right, hey folks, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Todd Nape. I am a director of land development here at Pulte Homes. Um, I've had a 30 year career in this business, a professional career, uh, 27 of them with, with Pulte. Uh, I think you can see uh, through the folks that have spoke today, the, the passion that, that Pulte employees have, the passion about the work, the passion about the company. Um, again, Trey alluded to some of the years that we have combined and uh, the greater majority of our careers have been spent here at Pulte and uh, I am very happy and pleased to say that it's been a fantastic place to work. Um, I, I recommend it to many folks for our products as well as, as employment. And uh, it, it's a fantastic place to, to earn a living and, and enjoy what you do. Um, I am a, a product of the industrial arts in schools. Uh, I spent most of my uh, middle school and high school days in, in the wood shops and metal shops. Of, of the schools. Um, thankfully, uh, I will say uh, moving into college after high school, I honestly had no idea what on earth I wanted to do. Um, you know, you tip, you think of the typical majors, uh, none of which were related to, to the world that, that I enjoyed most. And uh, I, I did a fair amount of trade work in, through schools and uh, thankfully, found a construction management program at NAU. And after I found that career path uh, or college major path, um, it made things much easier for me. I found my people. And uh, so with that, um, after leaving NAU, uh, I did enter the home building business with, with another firm uh, for a few years uh, before coming to Pulte, working in their home building side of things, managing home construction. It was very relatable to me based on my, my past experience. Um, again, with Pulte having uh, countless opportunities for growth here, uh, I was offered the opportunity to uh, move out of the home construction portion of our company and uh, learn more about land development. Uh, Pulte does purchase raw land, develops it for beneficial use, and builds the homes and the communities uh, as a whole. So we'll take a raw piece of dirt, um, entitle it through the cities, counties, whatever it might be, um, with the help of civil engineering firms and other consulting firms, uh, we'll build the communities. Um, as you can see in this minute picture on the, on the screen here, I mean, this is a native desert site out in Buckeye. Uh, it's it is eventually a build out will be in excess of about 7,000 homes um, with 27 holes of golf, a couple rec centers, 
based on it, activity centers, it's a truly lifestyle community. The folks can live uh, and play right in this site here. And when I stepped on that project in 2004, it was a native desert project with zero utilities within probably a 12 mile radius. Um, so my, my responsibilities here have, have led into a managing consulting firms, civil engineers, and folks in the, uh, the design and construction of, of roads, infrastructure, pipelines, community buildings, um, and then our home building team comes in after me, um, after we, we provide the home sites for them. It's uh, uh, our, our land development team, primarily the, the employees have strong backgrounds in, in civil engineering and or construction management um, that they don't necessarily have to have degrees or, or, or licenses in those areas, but experience of course is critical to, to those couple areas. Um, we, we do a lot of civil and, and, and professional roadway work and sanitary facilities and things that uh, are critical to, to essentially building cities. Uh, we help cities build cities and uh, we built the, and, and developed the infrastructure that helped grow some of these cities in the outlying areas where we're the driving force of, of their design and construction of, of eventually a community that will be tremendously larger than the footprint that we started. But uh, so we work a lot, I work a lot in the elements outside. Um, construction and, and, and design is, is a very social atmosphere. It takes a lot of people to put this stuff together. Um, so it, 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 it is a, a social job, folks. I remember taking some aptitude tests and, and then they asked, you know, do you like to work with people? And I'm thinking, eh, I can go it alone. I'm okay. Um, but then is it a problem if you work with people? No, not really. But uh, I've learned that uh, it, you don't do a lot by yourself um, with any real deliverables at the end of the day or end of the week. It, it's a collaborative situation. So it is a very social environment in what we're doing. Um, some of the strengths that we look for in people, again, very redundant, I'm sure. Uh, I think a lot of us could rattle these similar ones off in, in any career field, but uh, I have found resourcefulness is um, scarce, frankly. Um, people need to have adaptability to do what we do. Um, there's so much in the gray that we do to connect the dots. Um, folks need to be resourceful. And it's hard to teach resourcefulness, of course, right? But it, it, if you see folks that, that have those tendencies or can provide exercises for you know, being resourceful, as easy as when, you know, hey, my Zoom went out, I can't turn in my homework. That's not being very resourceful. There's other ways to go about that, right? Um, that's a, a teachable moment, how to, how to find another path to, to get the work done. Um, as I said, you know, it takes independent decisions, you need to be able to, to, to make decisions on your own, um, but yet there's often loads of collaboration with a lot of other professionals um, and, and non-professionals, frankly, uh, needing to be open to, to, to input from all. Accountability is critical. Um, Essentially, in our world, we have we're seeking you know return on our investment. Uh, as we all know, we pay interest on loans, and time is is not uh, uh, our friend in in the interest world. So the faster we get things turned around, um, the, the 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 faster we get our return on our investment. So that kind of ties into the deadlines piece as well. So accountability is is delivering on the expectations. Um, folks need to be able to count on that you're going to be there on Monday at eight um, because a lot of money and a lot of other follow-up items are dependent upon that. Deadlines, I said, um, it's their make or break it. Um, we, we have, in some cases, we'll have operations running that uh, if you park the equipment, it's a $10,000 a day downtime situation. Uh, and 
if we're not prepared in advance of that, we're, we're affecting the deadlines and affecting the bottom line. Uh, and because I'm, I serve many other customers within our business, I've got to be accountable and held to the deadlines to deliver my product to the balance of our business who are already counting on it and already setting up resources to monetize it. Technical, of course, I've mentioned that, you know, backgrounds in, in civil engineering, backgrounds in contracting, um, trade related work, super beneficial, um, not critical, but very beneficial. But folks that can, can see what's seeing 3D on a 2D piece of paper, right? Um, some people are phenomenal at doing that inherently. That it's, it's built in skills. Some are not, and, and, and it can be taught. But uh, having folks that think technically on how these dots actually connect and when they connect, what it's supposed to look like, or before it's, they're connected, what it looks like is a very important um, trait in, in what we do. And in, in land development, everything's large. It, it's not a two and a half inch tall piece of baseboard. It's 20 foot sticks of pipe. It's equipment that has tires that are, you know, 12 feet high. Everything's large. You have to see in, in far ahead of, of these moving parts. Spatial relationships, of course, uh, when folks are saying, hey, that, that curb should be three feet tall. Well, that it, it, it doesn't, the curbs on your streets are not three feet tall. You'd be able to mentally understand what three feet looks like uh, or what two and a half inches looks like. It, it, without a tape measure is important. Uh, problem solving, as we've all said, uh, I think is probably one of the biggest uh, advantages a person can have or disadvantage. If you can't figure out how to get out of a box, um, you're going to have a hard time. And solving problems to move projects forward is critical to the business. It's critical to success. Uh, it's critical to careers. I did speak a little bit about communication skills. Um, it's a very social environment that the construction world is in and or engineering and, and, and design. Um, relationship building with those folks that you're working with, critical. You're, you're dependent on them. Um, a lot of what we do, or at least what I do, and I feel like a quarterback among all these consultants and trade folks and principals. I'm dealing with people that are principals of companies corporations, executives, and 15 minutes later, I'll turn around and, and be talking to a concrete finisher that has little to no education. The ability to speak to all of those levels of professionals is critical to getting results and delivering what we set out to do. Communication skills are immensely critical. And then building relationships, um, a lot of what Lauren talked about. I mean, people trust or people enjoy working around folks they trust. They lean on them. Um, people look for folks that, um, that support them. And uh, we go and deliver on far more by building relationships than building barriers uh, with different folks, again, among this variety of, of professionals that are all around us at any given time. Um, pulling them all together is, is important and having them want to be on your team helps a, a person's career for sure. Um, moving on in construction management, you know, that's a, a kind of a large reaching um, career field. Uh, I'm, again, coming from, from home construction and land development, but it it applies to all kinds of construction related careers. Um, it is not, it, you're, if, if you can share with your students, um, construction and construction management is not the guy leaning on the shovel on the streets that we drive by. Um, it, it is not the stereotypical construction worker. Construction management is an art. It, it's a great career to go into. Um, 
you're motivating folks, you're driving visions, you're delivering, you have a lot to look at at the end of each day, each week, each month. If, if there's people that need something, need a result of their energy at the end of the day to feel fulfilled, construction is a fantastic place to do that. Um, uh, it, it's very rewarding to me. I enjoy what I do. I get to see what I've done and or coordinated. And, uh, and I get to see it for the last 30 years in this valley. Um, I pass multiple jobs that, that I continue to smile and, and, and feel good about. I show my kids, my, my wife. It, it, it's a noble profession that, that pays well. Uh, there are schools and a lot more of them now than, than when I was in college. There's a lot of great schools that, uh, that, that are turning out students in this industry um, or in this, this career field, most of which have better than a 95% hiring rate upon graduation. Um, at the universities, the, uh, the trade schools, the junior colleges, it, it's a fantastic career path and uh, Pulte needs a whole lot more of them. So lastly, lastly uh, you know, internships, we talked a little bit about, um, Pulte provides them um, when needed and, and on occasion, you know, we bring in folks, little to no experience, share our world with them. And uh, once we get a hold of some of these good folks, we don't want to let them go. Uh, we may bring them back summer after summer. And, uh, and ultimately, the, the goal is to hire them. We've invested in them now for a summer or two or three. And uh, we put them to work and they're already further ahead than some new hires with experience, maybe from another company. So uh, I, I can attest personally to two interns that uh, I have, have mentored in my career uh, that are working for other builders in town now. Um, I'm proud of them. I'm, I'm happy to see them grow. Uh, they're folks that uh, that hold higher positions than I do, um, and, and I'm glad to be a part of of their career path. And and you know, may may come back to work with them again someday somehow. And and I would really enjoy that. So, Pulte is here to grow folks, and uh, we have a lot to offer. I think uh, that if we can get some more folks thinking about what we do as as a noble profession and. And, and turn some of your students that may have tendencies um, that may or may not involve college. Uh, there's, there's good careers out there for everybody. So appreciate the time to, yep. to talk about what we do. Thanks, Todd. And thanks, everybody. So we got a couple more minutes before we finish up here at half past the hour. So really, you got a panel of home builders here with a lot of experience. Any questions that we can answer for the group? that would help your students or your career paths? Yeah, Trey, I'll jump in with a quick question. When uh, our educators are talking to students, oftentimes you know, it's nice to be able to share kind of what you look for in an ideal candidate, which you guys covered pretty well, but what are some of the gaps that you see with with, um, in, in, in this case, particular young people that are coming right out of high school or right out of college, what are some of the biggest gaps in skills that, that you see? Yeah, my, my, what I see is just the, um, is, I don't want to say it lightly, you know, that entitlement and I need it now. And if I don't get it right away, I'm going to move on to the next thing. Um, you know, when we think about the longevity that a lot of us have stayed, because we got a great company, we got great people, we can see the long term trajectory of starting out small and growing into something big. Um, I think a lot of a lot of folks have that eagerness to get in. But then if they don't move up quick enough, or fast enough, they're on to the next thing. Um, so I think you know, when we look for candidates, we're looking for great people, great human beings to begin with, because we can work with a good core and then train them. And so somebody's got a good work ethic where, you know, we're not micromanagers. We, we give you some good expectations and then we let you go do a good job. It's kind of the Steve Jobs analysis, you know, analogy is we hire smart people to tell us what to do. 
Um, that's what we look for. And I think, you know, trying to find those candidates, um, you know, can sometimes be a little bit more difficult, but, uh, but I think the training and the skill set it's beneficial, but if you got somebody sitting before you that has a lot of great skills, maybe a challenge to the organization and our peers, we, we won't hire them. I'll rather take somebody that's a little bit more less skilled and work with them because it's will and skill. If you got the will to win and be good and wake up every day and work hard, I'll teach you the skill part. Vice versa, if it's not there, it's really hard. Um, so. You know, I think that's what we look for. And I think uh, we spend a little bit more time looking for those characteristics. Thanks. So Trey, I had a quick question for you and it kind of ties into what your comments were there. You know, I, I hear this over and over again about um, uh, attitude, right? And, and drive, grit, right? Or, you know, what, what are you willing to stick to? Which, you know, Todd kind of alludes to that too in some of the, being able to stick to it and learn the, the, the skilled craft. Um, what would you say uh, would be a couple of one or two words that describe Pulte's culture? So, and my question for that is, is the culture the same in the field with the skilled craft people versus the culture of your team that's in the back office that makes all sorts of operations and financial things happen versus the, your two team that talked about the customer service side, whether that was on the sales or the uh, meeting the, the warranty needs? Yeah, that's a great question. If, if one of my peers want to jump in, just stop me because you know I'll talk all day long. <laughs> I like that question, Paul, because Todd kind of touched on it in terms of, um, you know, the relationships we have with our trades. And so we have this great culture that is respectful um, and cooperative. And so we're willing to help out anybody and we do not look down on the trade base. In fact, it's quite the, you know, it's quite the opposite. We hear of other builders and that, that, you know, they'll whip the trades and they just, they, they treat them with disrespect as a way that I could classify it. And it's really unfortunate because that's just not who we are. And so when you think about helping them and giving them good expectations and understanding um, their world a little bit, it goes a long way into building those relationships because what we're seeing is as we sell more homes than we can build right now um, and a trade shortage, because you don't have a whole lot of, I'm sure you've learned in your other meetings, there's not a whole lot of people. I know my son's not gonna go out there and swing a hammer on a roof right now. There's less people going into the trades and more people retiring. So, you know, I think, the relationships that we have with the trades, they want to work for us versus the people that are screaming at them and yelling at them. They drop their work because they, they, they know what to expect here. So I think it's just having respect for our fellow human being. Hey, we're all human at the end of the day. We just happen to do jobs. Um, that's the way I, I would characterize it. Just respect, understanding that person for who they are, no matter what they do or what their, you know, you know what their life has been. Um, really just evaluating them for the, the person that they are and, and respecting that and uh, building those good relationships. No, we've got about two minutes else? left. Yeah, I just, we had two minutes left. So I want to make sure that we let the, uh, our educator friends chime in. So I saw one comment, I really appreciate how you touched on the importance of deadlines with the trade group. So Todd, it looks like somebody commented for you on that. That's good. When you were speaking, you said that you bring your people together um, for the communication and the relationships. What are some things that you guys do to build that? Todd, go ahead. Yeah, no, that's a great question. Um, and in a piece that that I try personally, actually, and, and Pulte is 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 behind me of of building the relationships with the trades, um, you know, in the field, that's, that's just, again, being human and being humble and, and, and working at all levels and, and uh, getting down or up to whatever level it would be. But uh, we do bring in the trades um, uh, either in some cases monthly uh, or sometimes a couple times per year. And we bring in and we hear our business 
know, projections uh, out in front of us, what we think Pulte Homes is going to do from a, a numbers perspective. It helps the trades plan their resource planning as well. And it, it's almost opening our business to them to get them to buy in and become more of a team member than just a subcontractor. Um, which is 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 a not a, I don't even like that word and I'm using it um, blatantly because just to prove a point they are trade partners and they're they're team members really even though they might work for another company we've hired that company we've hired that team and we bring them into the fold with our team and 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 make sure they know that they're a valuable contributor to our team so I guess to answer your question we have specific meeting appointments where we may bring in one trade or or 20 at a time and share our business with them and share intentions and best practices for both teams to uh to reap beneficial uh, benefits and they get to collaborate talk to each other be efficient so so there's some some good outcomes i know we've ran out of time uh do you all have another meeting i would imagine well, I'm sure our educators, they've been at it all day. Um, so I appreciate it, Trey, Todd, Lauren, Marin, the, the time today and just uh, the, what you've been able to share. Um, and just thank you for, for the time. We know it's a, a big chunk of your time and you, sh you could be out selling homes and helping customers and doing all those kinds of things that you do, but to take the hour out of of your day is really important for us. So I wanna thank you for that. Just remind everybody, this is our last session. So we'll be seeing everybody tomorrow for our wrap up from four to five. And um, you all, our employers are welcome to attend as well. I'm just gonna drop the Zoom link into the chat so that you have it. Um, you should have gotten an invite from me just in case. Just copy and paste that into your calendar so that you know you have it for tomorrow, but we'll look forward to seeing you at the wrap up tomorrow, everyone. Thanks again for a wonderful day. I hope everybody has a great evening. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. And thank you to the Thanks. teachers. We know you have a hard job right now and in the COVID environment. And I applaud you immensely. So thank you for being out there for our, for our kids. Um, yes. I, I, I couldn't be more appreciative. So I tell, I tell our teachers that um, we really, really appreciate what you're doing out there. So keep it up. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you, everybody. You Bye-bye.